Okay, welcome back. This video today is on angular momentum. You see, we got to try and get something across. You see, for ever, pretty much for every equation you've ever worked for things going in straight lines, there is some equivalent formula for things that are wanting to move in circles. I'm going to try and see if I can just sit there and wobble this all. Hey, it is a video about going in circles. Anyway. So you got to think, if an object going in a straight line has a momentum, as given by rho equals mv, you got to think, if something traveling in a straight line has a momentum, something moving in a circle would also have a momentum. Because if there's a velocity, if there's a linear velocity, there's also an angular velocity. You should be able to figure out this equation already. Now, this you would need from me. The symbol for angular momentum is L. But what would we use instead of M for circle world? Well, instead of M, we got to remember, for things going in circles, it's not just their mass, but we've got to look at how that mass is distributed. We've got to look at the radius of that circle. And that's why we use this letter I, because it takes that into account. And in circle world, instead of using a V, we use a W. Holy cow. So angular momentum is equal to I times W. Now, let's keep going with this idea of circle world type things. You remember back in momentum, most momentum problems you did were trying to get you ready for things that look like hit and bounce or hit and stick type questions, like MV plus MV equals MV plus MV. Well, guess what? It's no different in the world of circles. In the world of circles, we can do the same thing. We can have IW plus IW equals IW plus IW. Heck, we can have hit and stick in circle world. Hit and stick would just look like this. I plus IW over here for a hit and stick type problem. Now, this is all circle, all angular momentum problems are. What we will generally just say is this. Conservation of angular momentum conservation of angular momentum kind of run out of room over there I'm just gonna say this it's basically IW equals IW I like calling merry-go-round questions for short because a lot of times that's where you start now this is just a video of my hand so I can't get too elaborate with demonstrations but if you were in my classroom right now Sitting at the front of the room, there would be a stool that would look like this. And, well, it's actually, that don't really look like a stool. But anyway, hey, I, give me a second. I'm getting there. There's a stool that's sitting in the front of the room. looks like this. And it's a rotational stool. And you can actually set, see if I can draw some of that. Oh, yeah, here we go. Sitting down on the stool. Da, 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 da. This person has huge arms with no hands. Ah, there you go. Give him some hands. So there you go. And what I will do is have somebody sit on the stool. Usually I'll have them put about a five pound weight in each hand out here. And I'll have them sit on the stool and get them to start rotating. Whee! Spin, spin, spin on the stool you go. If you've ever watched the figure skater, you know exactly what's going to happen here. This person is going to get to spinning, and all you're going to have them do is bring their arms in. Bring their arms in. Bring them up together so that their arms and those weights are somewhere in here. Wow, I just drew boobs. Ignore all that. Anyway, have them bring their arms in. And what you're going to find out, as soon as they bring their arms in tight, woo, 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 they'll speed right up. And then if they bring their arms back out again, you'll notice they slow down. Now, all you've got to do is think, well, what's changing? We see the mass of the system isn't changing. The only thing that's changing is the radius that that mass is distributed. If you've ever watched the figure skater go into their last little thing, the figure skater will go into their little spin on their feet. And what they do, they bring their arms in tight. And as they bring their arms in, what happens? They spin faster and faster and faster. A figure skater is a perfect IW equals IW question. 
because the only thing that's happened in this problem, you haven't changed the mass, but you've changed the radius. Therefore, the velocity has to change accordingly because the product of the moment of inertia times the angular velocity, it's got to remain a constant. It's not created. It's not destroyed in this problem. Now, the best thing I know to do at this point is let's actually just get out and work a textbook problem. And this is that same classic example. Oh, a little better drawn, but don't you be judging. You've got a student sitting on the stool, and they've, they've went into a rotation, and now they bring these weights in close, and they're going to rotate even faster. Perfect little figure skater example here. The second I see this, I'm like, oh, this is a merry-go-round question. So the first thing that pops into my head is IW equals IW. And the reality of it is, I mean, this is your initial, your initial, and your final, and your final over here. So, I mean, textbook style, you might write I-I-F-F. -F. feel like a sailor. I-I, sir. Anyway, I just write I-W-I-W. -I -W. It's good enough. Now, this problem is incredibly sweet. It says the moment of inertia is 2.25 for this student. It's like, are you kidding me? You're going to make it that easy. And then it says the student is rotating at a speed of 5 rads per second. And then the student brings their arms in. And the new moment of inertia is 1.8. So you've got two eyes. And you've got this one angular velocity over here at this point. All we want to do is find the new, oh, it says it right here, find the new angular speed of the system is all it wants us to find. I love this one. It's, it's a sellout question. It already gave you what I is. By the way, I want you to notice this is really nothing much more than proportion, which means if you work a problem and it gives you revs per second or revs per minute, you actually don't even have to convert them. You're still going to get the right answer in this conversion problem. So all I've got to do in this one is my first I is 2.25. My first W is 5. And it says that my new I is 1.8. So what is my final velocity? And that's the show. So for me, I'll go 2.25 times 5 divided by 1.8 equals 6.25, and this would be rads per second as my new, there. There's the simplest, most IW, IW question. Now, this problem was being extra easy. Usually what they do is this. Usually you'll start off with like IW, IW, and it gives you like a mass and a radius, and you'll write MR squared W equals m r square w or something like this now in the case of the figure skater what would be neat is does the mass ever change well in a figure skater you could just mark out the m's the masses would cancel and then the radius is the only thing that would change in that question so you'd have basically r square w equals r square w over here let's do another example maybe one a little bit harder this one is actually school bells going off. Everybody go home. Have a good day. I guess I'll just stop the video. Oh, wait. That could actually disrupt you a little bit. Anyway, this is where we get this classic idea of a merry-go-round question come from. We've got this guy standing on the merry-go-round. And if you look, he's actually walking towards the center of the merry-go-round. Now, in a weird way, this is still a figure skater question. It's the same idea. What's going to happen as this person walks towards the center? Well, the rotational velocity should increase as he moves towards the center of this thing. If he walked towards the outside, it should change in that fashion. Now, in this problem, you've got to take into account. Right off the bat, it's still nothing but an IW equals IW question in here. Well, great. That's easy enough. But you've got to take into account what I is. You see there's two I's in this problem. You've got to take into account that guy has an I, but the merry-go-round itself also has a moment of inertia. So there's really two I's in this problem. We've got an I for the person. I don't know what to write here. An I, it says that this is a student. 
So I will write, we've got an I for the student plus an I for the, does it call it a merry-go-round? Maybe I'm the only person that still says the word merry-go-round. But hey, it makes me happy. I'm going to write I merry-go-round, M-G-R. That's kind of weird. But anyway, W equals on the other side. The other side's going to look basically the same. You're going to have an I for the student. But now I'm going to notice something. The I for the student, now that's a change. It's not the same I that's over here because the student is walking in on this thing. Now, plus an I for the merry-go-round W. Now, the I for the merry-go-round is going to remain constant. Now, I know what you're going to say. Ooh, that's and that's constant. They cancel. No, they do not. Check out what's going on here. This is this will not cancel. Stop getting so carried away trying to cancel everything out. Uh, nothing is going to cancel in this question. Now, we do need to establish one thing here. What equations are we going to use? Well, this student. This student is not a disk. He is not a sphere. He is not a thin rod. This student, for him, we're just going to use the equation mr squared. But the merry-go-round, on the other hand, the merry-go-round, now if this problem was being a really sweet question, it would literally just give us I for the merry-go-round. It does not. It says the merry-go-round has a mass of 100, a radius of 2. So it does not. Now, this merry-go-round is a solid disk which means the merry-go-round, we're going to use the equation one-half mr squared for that merry-go-round. Now, if you're ready, let's go ahead and start working this problem out. I'm going to, I'm going to make like a big old bracket here because I'm going to work this out. mr squared for the student would be the student has a mass of 60 times r squared what is the student's radius on this left side? He starts on the outside edge, which is at 2 meters. So 2 square plus, now we need to do the merry-go-round. Plus 1 half, the merry-go-round has a mass of 100 times, it has a radius of 2 square the initial angular velocity, so my first W, sorry, I'm all like sliding up and down. The very first W is 2 rads per second. So all this times 2 equals, on the other side, the guy is still mr squared. The only thing that changes in this problem is the R for the student. The student, his mass is still 60. But his radius is changed to 0.5 plus the merry-go-round, which never changed. So it's still 1 half of 100 times 2 squared W. And so there's our equation. We've worked it all out. Big old beefy problem, but there's not a whole lot to it in this one. Uh, just a lot of going through and calculating now. 60 times 4, why did I do that? 240. Uh, let's see here. Half of 100 is 50. 50 times 4 is 200. Now all that is times 2. I think most people when doing one this big, they'll forget that first W just because of so many calculatings. So we end up here with 440 times 2, which would be, I don't need a calculator for that, 880 equals. And now on the other side, uh, let's see, 60 times 0.5 square is 15, plus we've already done that once, that's 200, W, so this is... 215W, so 880 divided by 215. Now, we just talked about this. Should the merry-go-round speed up or slow down? He's moving into the center. It's just like a figure skater, so this better speed up. 
first velocity was 2. My final velocity is 4.09. It basically doubles. Wow, that's a weird 9. Mere second. Sometimes these problems will do like a little extra step in there. This problem will go in and it will want you to find the kinetic energy of all this before. So it'll say find the initial kinetic energy. If this problem wants you to find the initial kinetic energy, it's really still no different. You just got to make sure that if you want to find the kinetic energy initial of that object, you'd have to do something. When you did IW square, one half, You'd have to remember there's two I's. The first I would be, you'd have to have the I of the student plus I of the merry-go-round times W square. And then the same thing, if you want to find the kinetic energy final of this, you got to take into account that there's two I's in the question. I'm going to just take, I know this video is getting long, but I'm going to take one second to tell you like, what the other most common variation of this question is. What this question will sometimes do to kind of mess with you. Uh, sometimes you'll have a problem. It's got like a disc or something like this. And there'll be like two kids standing on the merry-go-round. Now, if it's a nice problem, it'll say it's a massless merry-go-round. And if it says that, it's just so you can leave it out of your calculations. And so this problem will get started, and this thing is spinning, and then all of a sudden, here comes another kid. He's jealous, so this kid comes and jumps up on the here. Now, in the case of this problem, let's say that this is kid one, this is kid two. If the problem was nice, it'd make both kids the same mass, because that'd make your calculations easier. But if the problem looks like this, it's still an IW, IW question. It's just you have to take into account. You've got to have initially an I and M1 R square for this kid and M R square for that kid. So you'd have an M R square, and I'm going to say that's for like kid one. Plus, you'd have to have an M R square for the second kid, W. And then on the other side, you'd have to have an M R M R square for the first kid plus an MR square for the second kid. And what has changed is now you need an MR square for the third kid. And that's the most common thing. Uh, sometimes the same problem will look like this. They'll have like a disc that's spinning and it'll just be like just that disc and then it will drop like a blob of putty falls onto the disc. Well, all you gotta do is it's an IW Sometimes there'll be a second disc. A very common college lab is to drop a second disc or drop a hoop on here. But all you got to do is look at it. To begin with, all you've got is an I for the disc. And then somebody drops the putty on there. And you got to think, well, I've still got an I for the disc, but now I've also got an I for the drop of putty. Don't ask me why putty. I don't write the questions. I just teach them. This is what you'll end up doing. That's literally it. It's like a hit and stick question in the world of things that go in circles is all it is. And that is the most common angular momentum questions there are. Thank you for watching. Buy Energizer batteries. Not really. I don't. Ooh, this has a little button on there to test it. Well, either this battery is dead or Energizer, you are a sham.